drop that thing in there and then you don't have to think about it. Good morning YouTube. This is Cruise Man. Just had my Sunday breakfast here at Awake in Carrollton. Actually, I think I'm in Plano. And just getting ready to head back home. Wanted to check in with everybody, update you on some of the latest goings on. Welcome to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. It is a another, I should say, beautiful morning here in Carrollton. It's a little cloudy today, but it's about 74 degrees. Probably get up into the 80s today. But we have had an amazing early fall, I guess you'd say. I hope it lasts, I don't know, but for the last week and a half, two weeks, it's been pretty nice. What's the weather like where you are? We've had some great riding weather. And since the weather's been so cool and nice, I decided this would be a perfect time to tear the bike down and do my uh, air filter replacement again, which is the uh, second time I've replaced my air filter. I did it the first time at about 8,000 miles, which it didn't really need it, but I did it so I could make a video. This was the second time that I've done an air filter replacement, and I've learned a lot along the way. And I've come up with a few shortcuts, and I'm going to add those shortcuts to my uh, 2018 plus Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. So that uh, if you go back and watch the air filter replacement video, uh, you will see I've added a few steps, but I think it's a much easier process. And I expect I'll have that video ready for you in a few days. I don't have it yet. I'm still doing the editing on it and updating some other things as well. But uh, while I had the bike apart, I went ahead and did a permanent mount on my daylight sensor for the Path Blazer headlight modulator. And I hope to have that video out for you in a few days as well. Uh, that will be on YouTube. So if you're looking for a way to permanently mount that daylight sensor, I'll show you how I did it. I have not fully tested the location yet, but I think it's going to work just fine. A lot of you have emailed me and asked me questions on how I mounted the daylight sensor. So I will make sure you get a chance to see uh, exactly how I did that. And the way I did it, it's best to do it while the top shelter is off the bike. I also took the opportunity while I had the uh, center panel switch off of the bike to go ahead and install the stainless steel safety pin which goes down into the steering spindle this is the one that comes from traction dynamics many of you have seen the videos from Max McAllister and I went ahead and installed that little safety pin while I was in there it's very easy to do uh, you can probably you don't have to have the top shelter off the bike to do it. You could uh, you can lift up the console or the center panel switch is actually what Honda calls it. It's uh, this piece right here, and there's a way. And in my uh, maintenance video series, I show you a shortcut on how to move this out of the way so you could install that stainless steel pin. It's very easy to do. I say very easy. It's much easier than having to take the bike all apart to do it for sure. The safety pin, uh, the little stainless steel pin, just basically sticks down into the bore of the uh, steering spindle. Very simple, very effective. I think they're 19 or 20 dollars from Traction and uh, I'll put uh, a link to Max's website in the description of this video 
Uh, I think everybody should probably go ahead and order it. And next time you change your air filter or the next time you have your center panel switch uh, lifted up or moved out of the way, just drop that thing in there and then you don't have to think about it. Also, a couple of new uh, product review videos coming soon. And I know a lot of you have been asking me about my wiring video. I promised you I was doing a video on the wiring uh, techniques that I've used for my accessories. And I was kind of hoping to get a different product in to include with that. But I may just go ahead and release the wiring strategy video, but it'll probably be another week. I'm sorry for the delay, but uh, I just want to make sure that I've got everything in there to give you the best information possible. Also, uh, on a kind of a, another note, GoPro just came out with their Hero 9, which is the upgrade to the Hero 8, which is what I have. And for those of you out there that have a GoPro, are you planning to uh, update or upgrade to the Hero 9? Uh, the things that bother me about the Hero 8, they really didn't address. So I don't see a compelling reason for me to move up to the Hero 9. This would be the perfect time to get on the bike and go somewhere. So this next week, I am planning to once again ride the bike out to West Texas to visit my brother. And I will be motor vlogging from the highway. And one of the things that I plan to do is to do a comparison between the built-in Honda OEM GPS with the 2020 navigation update and my Garmin XT. So I will be running both GPS's simultaneously and I'll be able to give you guys kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of what the experience is like uh, using both of these GPS systems. That, that probably is a long overdue video. I will also show you a comparison of the GPX files that come from the Honda Trip Planner compared to Basecamp, which is what I use to lay out my routes for the Garmin XT. So what I'm doing is I am creating my route in Basecamp exporting a GPX file and then I'm importing that GPX file into the Honda Trip Planner website and then I re-export a GPX file from Honda Trip Planner and I will import that file into the motorcycle's GPS because it will understand that format it will not understand the GPX file that comes directly out of Basecamp. I can tell you without showing you the comparison, I have done the comparison in, you know, on my own, and I can tell you there's a lot more information in the GPX file that comes out of Basecamp than the GPX file that comes out of the Honda Trip Planner. And I'm sure that might have something to do with the experience between the two GPS is how they work. So anyway, watch for that video. I might be able to get that out while I'm in uh, West Texas. So maybe within the next week, I'll have that video out as well. So there's a lot of new videos coming. I do appreciate your support. Some of you made fun of me for making the, the video about the, uh, the side stand. My last video is where I showed you how to take the bike off the side stand and and I was talking about the stress and strain on the steering spindle. And a couple of you made fun of me for that video, but after only three days, that video got 10,000 views. So, you know, maybe I'll make a video on how to put on a helmet. What do you think? Or how to put your boots on or your gloves, put on the gloves. Who knows? But anyway, I do appreciate your support. I appreciate you, your uh, subscription to the channel. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I, I recently just learned, believe it or not, I just learned that the more thumbs up the video gets, uh, the better it is for YouTube as far as their algorithm to get your videos viewed. So I don't usually even ask people to give the video a thumbs up. I just forget about it. 
So if you think about it, hit the little thumbs up if you like the video. But I appreciate those of you that have subscribed to my channel. I appreciate those of you that watch. And thank you for all the comments and support. And uh, it, it does not go unnoticed. So hope all of you have a great week. I want you to ride safe out there. And I will see you on the next Cruise Vans Motovlog. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.